Okay, class, today, this is your speed building. You have Q&A. Oh, sorry, your test. <laughs> sorry. You have your test, 240 Q&A. Number one, you have Steve, Daniel, Peter, Big Pine, Can Am, and Ms. Garza. <laughs> sorry. I'm like starting for the day, so I'm thinking I'm doing speed building. Okay, and it starts in the middle, you all. This is 240 Q&A for five minutes. All right, when you were making out with him, were y'all using any alcohol or drugs or anything? No, sir. All right, as far as Steve, was he married at the time of you and him having sexual relations between June and October of 2015? Yes. All right. Separated. I'm sorry? He was separated. But he was officially legally married back when you were having an affair with him? Yes. All right, anyone else that you kissed, made out with, or had an affair with during? No. All right, and I think you cut me off a little bit, and I just want to make sure that the because a month from now we're all going to try and read this so anyone else that you've kissed made out with or had sexual relations with during the marriage to daniel no all right as far as for terminology with the final divorce decree is there anything different in the temporary orders regarding your son that you would be asking the court to change at final i would like for daniel to help pay for half like football stuff like that things of this nature I would prefer Peter to stay with me on school nights. So if he wants to do change up the weekends a little bit, and if my son is crying that he wants to see his mother, I would like for him to allow him to see me. Okay. How old is your son now? He's six. Okay. Outside of these comments, do you have anything else at the final trial you would be asking the court to change from the current temporary order agreement? As far as who Peter would live with? Well, I'm just talking about everything to do with your son, Peter. There's currently a mediation agreement for temporary orders. Is there anything at final trial in this case that you're going to be asking the court to deviate from what is contained in the temporary order agreement regarding your rights as a conservator possession and access times? I would like if my son asked to see me that he can see me. Okay. I would like for him to be awarded to me so that I can claim him for tax purposes, things like that. Yeah, that's about it, I think. Okay. And as far as the time period from when we reached the mediation agreement for temporary orders through now, I take it you have not had to run to court, file any motions, or claim that anything is going wrong with the current agreement, correct? No. Okay. Except for lack of observing. What do you mean by that? Peter was out with his dad. His dad wasn't watching him. Peter got burnt by the dirt bike, stole keys to a four-wheeler, and hit another vehicle trying to run away because he was afraid his dad was going to smack him. All right. And how do you know all this happened? because Peter told me. Okay, anything else? I just want him to be more observant, more cautious. As far as the division of the community property between you and Daniel, what are you asking the court to do? I want half. Okay, half of what? Half of everything. Okay, tell me what everything is. Everything that we acquired together since we've been married or together. Like the house, I think I should get half of it just because he was living with me and my parents when we bought it. Okay. I'm going to break this down a little bit. When you say half of everything, I mean, you've mentioned a house. Tell me what the address for the house is. 72, no, I don't remember our address. 23146 Big Pine. All right, who's currently residing there? Daniel. All right, is that by the agreement of the temporary orders? Yes, sir. All right, when did you all buy the house? 07. All right, remembering back, you all got married in 07? Yes, it was about two months before we got married. All right, so the house was purchased two months before marriage. Yes, sir. All right, who purchased the house? Daniel. All right, I'm assuming my name is on the title, right? Your name is on the title? Yes. Now, you're saying you're assuming your name is on the title. Do you know if your name is on the title? No, I was kept in the dark on a lot. All right, did you go to the closing at the title company and sign documents when the house was purchased? No, I don't believe so. Okay, do you have any documents or anything evidencing your name being on the title to the house? No. Whose name is on the mortgage? I believe Daniel. Okay, when the mortgage bill comes every month, is your name on it? No, I don't really go through the mail. So it is your understanding then that the mortgage is completely in his name? Yeah. All right, and the house was purchased in his name prior to the marriage, correct? Yes. All right, so what is it that you're asking the court to do with the residence? I'm asking for half of the equity in the house of our marriage. Everything that we worked together for and received in the eight years that we were married. I believe me and my son deserve half of it. Okay, so how is it that you'll get, you're going to be asking the court to give you half of the equity in the house? I think me and Peter should get half the equity in the house from the eight years that we lived there married. Okay, why do you say Peter? My son is my number one priority. Okay. I want to make sure I can take care of my son. 
So you're asking the court to award you and your son, Peter, half the equity in the house. Yes, sir. Okay. My concern out of all this, when me and Daniel are done, is to be able to take care of my son. That's all I want. Are you alleging that the house on Big Pine is community property or separate property? Community. Okay. Can you tell me what you believe or what is something that is community property? Community property would be things that we acquired together. Our boat, the Can-Am, our trucks, all the things that we acquired acquired together in our marriage or our relationship is community property. So that's what I'm kind of going to hone in in. You were married in 2007. Yes, sir. But the house was purchased by Daniel two months before that. Yes, sir. Okay, Ms. Garza. So as far as you can tell me today, you did not attend the closing and your name is not actually on the title. To the best of my knowledge. Okay, but that is a correct statement? Yes. All right. So is that house community property or Daniel's separate property? That is community property. Okay. I lived there. That is my home as well. All right. So I'm going to ask you, what is your evidence? And then we'll get ready for your 200s. 225, you have on A, number one, Colorado. And that's it. This is going to be, it's called Collision in the Country, number one, 225, and it starts in the middle for five minutes. Let's say when you were approximately a half mile from where you experienced this dirt, you didn't see any substantial debris or dust or wind in the air ahead of you? No, not any more than I had ever seen before. It was just real sudden. Do you think if such dirt had been blowing up ahead, not right where you were, but approximately a quarter of a mile ahead, that you would have been able to see it? Right. If it had been blowing that bad at the time, I would have seen it, yes. How far do you think you were able to see up ahead to pick up as you were driving, let's say within a mile, vicinity of this collision, how far do you think you would have been able to see ahead and pick up substantial dust or dirt blowing up ahead? I would say at least probably a mile if it had been blowing, you know. So it would be your testimony then that let's say as you were less than a quarter of a mile from where this accident occurred immediately prior to the time this dust started up, there was no substantial dust blowing within a mile of where you were across the highway. Is that correct? I never saw any. Based on what you saw, you didn't see any? Right. Living in eastern Colorado, I assume that you have experienced quite a few wind and dust storms across highways. Is that correct? Yes. And that is a problem you have to be aware of in driving? Right. If it is dry and the wind is blowing, you always have to watch out for it. Was it dry this time of year? It was fairly dry, yes. Now, you indicated earlier that you considered stopping at some point after you found yourself in this blowing dirt and sand. Where were you in relationship to when the collision occurred when you considered stopping? The wind and dirt had just hit me and cut off visibility altogether. And right at that point, because I could not see anything, I considered stopping. I did not because I was afraid the car behind me would hit me from the rear. So I went ahead and decided to proceed very slowly forward, easing myself toward the right shoulder, hoping I could feel it until hopefully I would come out of it as quickly as it came upon me. What speed were you going at the time you first experienced this dust blinding your vision? Probably around 50, I imagine. And when it hit, I slowed down to less than 10, maybe even five or even slower than that. I don't remember exactly, but I had almost stopped and I kind of let it roll ahead. From the time you got involved, first got involved with this blinding dust until the time immediately prior to the accident, you went from approximately 50 miles an hour down to approximately five miles an hour. Is that right? Right. Do you remember if you had your lights on? I did have my lights on. Do you remember if they were on high beam or low beam? I think they were probably on low. I don't remember, but I think they were probably on low beam. Why do you think that? In the daytime, I usually keep them on low beam if I have headlights on. Now, you also testified you started getting over toward the right to some extent. Is that right? I tried to. When you say tried to, what was the problem in getting over to the right? You couldn't see where you were going? Right. Then I couldn't even see the end of the car. I just assumed I was working myself toward the right. What did you do to work yourself to the right? Turned my steering wheel slightly toward the right. What was your intention as you were getting over to the right-hand side going about five miles an hour? I was going to go down onto the shoulder just in case somebody was coming from the other direction and couldn't see me either. And, you know, leave the road to somebody else and get down on the shoulder and continue to get through it. Or if I felt myself down onto the shoulder, if it kept up, I might have stopped. 
but your intention at that time was to drive along the shoulder on the right side. Right, up until I was completely off the roadway. Prior to the collision, were you able to see any lines, markings? Nothing. You couldn't see a line to your left? I couldn't see anything, no. Was there a line down the middle of the road at that location? They have these dashes to mark the center of the road all along the highway, yes. Did you come to an immediate stop when the collision occurred? As I remember, I came to a complete stop, immediate stop, right at the point of the collision. Then I got out of my car in the blowing dust to see what I had run into. Then where was your car in relationship to the car that you hit? Probably ahead and to the left. Your car was to your left of that car? In relationship to the other car, my car was ahead of it and to the left. What do you mean it was ahead of it? Well, my car was setting in front of the other car and a little to the left dead in front of it? Yes. What part of your car was damaged? The left front. The driver's side? Yes. Did you observe the other car? I did, but I am just guessing. I don't know for sure. I think the left front of the other car was damaged too. The driver's side? Yes. Did the other car have its lights on or do you know? I don't remember. I don't know. Were the cars just right next to each other within a matter of inches? I think they were, yes. You stopped immediately and then got out of your car? Right. And you didn't move your car then? You didn't back it up? As far as I remember, I did not. Did you have occasion to observe where the cars were located on the road at that point? At that point, I didn't. Did there come a time when you did observe where the cars were located? When another guy took over stopping traffic for me, I then went back up and this deputy told me to move my car over to the side and park it down in the ditch out and then you have your second 225 Q&A. You have Dan, Jan Jones, West End Drive, James Jones, San Antonio, Jad Jr., James, Red Rocks, Holiday Inn. And it starts at the very beginning, you all. This is 225 Q&A number one for five minutes. Number two, sorry. Please state your name and address. Jan Jones, 1900 West End Drive. How old are you? 22. I take it you are the plaintiff in this lawsuit? Yes. You are the mother of James Jones Jr.? Yes, I am. The wife of James Jones? Yes. I take it from prior testimony that you spent a large portion of your childhood in San Antonio? Yes, I did. From what years? I think the total period of time was eight years. During that period, did you come to know James Jones? Yes, I did. And what was your relationship? We went steady. During this period of going steady, did the two of you engage in intercourse? Yes, we did. And you recall the particular incident that gave rise to the birth of Jad Jr.? I conceived. Do you remember the intercourse? Yes, I do. Now, when did you realize that you became pregnant, Mrs. Jones? I believe it was around the last part of April or the 1st of May. April of 1982 or early May? Right. Then did you tell your steady? Yes. Did you tell your parents? I think my mother kind of gathered it because I had been out of school a couple of mornings with morning sickness. And she kind of gathered from that, and I told her I probably was. Had your father been transferred to this city by that time? Yes, sir. Did you and your mother join your father up there? Yes, we did. How long did you stay up there? I guess it was just about a year altogether from the time we moved here in June of 1983 until we were married, and then I moved down there to set up housekeeping with him. Now, when were the two of you married? December 27, 1982. About eight or eight and a half months from the time you realized you were pregnant. Right. Why did it take so long? Because my husband couldn't decide whether he wanted to marry me or not. He felt that every time he talked about it, he felt that he would only, so my child would have a name. And I kept telling him no, it was because I loved him and I wouldn't have gotten pregnant unless I had loved him. But he couldn't accept that. Did he finally accept it in December? I don't know whether he really accepted it or not, but I decided the best thing to do if we weren't was to give up my child for adoption because I felt that like I alone couldn't give him a complete home without us being married. So you were married in December and when was the baby born? January 13, 1983. You stayed up here for approximately six months? Right. I completed high school. In June, then you joined James. Yes, sir. And where was James at that time? In San Antonio. How long did you stay in San Antonio? I think it was until about early December of 1983. While you were in San Antonio for approximately these six months or so, did you have any marital difficulties? Was anything going wrong significantly? Well, I don't really think significantly. I think we were having a hard time adjusting to each other because we were so young and we quarreled some. 
I don't think anything really significant was going on at that time. Did anything happen to make you suspect that James was not entirely faithful to you? Yes. I never wanted to tie him down, and I never wanted to tell him he couldn't. He can do anything he wanted to, and that was fine with me. And one night, he was at the country club. As a result of this, did you do anything foolish? No, I didn't. We talked it over. He seemed, I think he was more upset about it than I was, but I decided to let it pass. Did you go out to the country club shortly thereafter? Yes, I did. Why? For revenge. Did you tell James that you were going? Yes, I did. I told him the next week when he did that. Well, I'm going out to Red Rocks. And he says, no, you are not. I said, you watch me. I meant I was. I think he was more upset about it, but I told him I was going. And what happened that night? Nothing. We just went out there. Who is we? I and another couple. We just went out there together. It was not a date, and we went out there and listened to the shows and then came home. Did you come back early or late? It was pretty late. Like about what time? It was about 4 o'clock, I think, something like that, because the place didn't close until 4. Did anything happen to anyone's car that night? Yes. His oil pan... He ran over a rock and it got a leak in it and burned up his engine because all the oil leaked out. Where did that happen? It was on the way back. It is an old country road and we were coming and there was this big rock in the middle of the road. Did you see that man the next day? Yes, I went by to see how his car was and he said the engine burned up. And did you have any relationship with him that day? No, I did not. Would you say you might have been flirting? I don't think there was too much flirting. I think we joked. No, I don't think there was any serious flirting. Now, try to remember how long this was after the time you came down to San Antonio. I'd say about four months, I think. In your first four months together? Right, the first time alone together. While you and James were in San Antonio, did he get in any kind of little band or anything? He and others had a little combo, just the two of them. Okay, did they play any particular place? Yes, they played at the Red Box after we had obtained it. And I think they played at the Holiday Inn for a week and maybe a few other places. I don't remember the names. There have been some charges that you frequented the Red Rocks while you frequented. Sorry. Okay, and so that's it. Um, have a good day, you all. And we'll come back tomorrow for a mock.